a guy who I never knew before, but his name is Byron Donald. Byron. Oh. Or is it? Wait, what's this guy's name? Oh, let me scroll down. Yeah. Well, that's eight o'clock. What the hell? It's early. Uh, man. Here, he came on the, on a Breakfast Club. And by Wait. the way, this is the second time I've seen this shit happen. There was another guy. There was another Larry Elder. No, is it Larry Elder? No, somebody. No, it was it was it him? Nigga, somebody went on the Breakfast Club before, nigga, and gave him the beats. What I'm talking about, yo, the nigga was talking circles around him. Like, bruv, I just got to play you this, bruv. and I ain't going to lie to you. I know Charlamagne is just for the content, but I, but this is when I realized Angela Rye, with all due respect, is just a hot air balloon spewing out rhetoric points and really got schooled by my boy, and I don't even know this nigga. Check this out. One party probably hurt though, Charlemagne. Yeah, because if you, trying, trying, in the, <clears throat> in the, if you don't have officers in the streets or officers, you know, in urban areas, who's really left in that lurch? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what what does qualified immunity have to do with having less police officers? Because so that... because the economic incentive of qualified immunity means that your personal assets aren't gone after if something goes wrong. So it, you know, you're in business. You're in business. Do you get involved in a project or a deal that leases all across the country? Not the chiefs, the officers. They will not be working these communities. I'm from Brooklyn. I think I said the same thing. Like, yo, it's so crazy why it keeps talking about, oh, immunity for cops. For? It exists already. Like, no, it, a police officer has what's called qualified immunity, which means if they yeah, shoot somebody, they can't go to jail no light to for live, huh? murder. No light if to you shoot somebody, you go to jail for murder. If a cop does it, they don't. That's part of qualified immunity, but it doesn't only protect when they're doing their job to the to like correctly. It protects slightly when at least the information known at that time, this they made an honest mistake. If it's an honest mistake, yeah. qualified immunity still exists, right? Because like humans aren't perfect. Like you, you don't have robots being police. You get what I'm hey. saying? Like, you can't pull back a bullet or you can't, like, whatever. Um, so that has to exist for police officers to even work. So it's crazy when people be like, yo, Trump is going to give them immunity. I'm like, wait, do you understand that Open police it. officers have some type of immunity already? And what, 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 what Trump was, I, hey. I want to get on some political shit, but what Trump was essentially talking about is that the Department of Justice wasn't going to step in Um to undermine who basically granted or or, or or deemed that the qualified immunity Close the door. existed in that case by case basis. Now, there's stupid people who be like, no, that means cops can just murder people. No. If if, if someone just cold a cop cold blooded kills kills somebody, you're going to jail, my nigga. Like, that's just what's gonna happen. Cause there's no qualified immunity for an unjustified killing of anybody. Black, white, pink, green, Asian, Puerto Rican. Brooklyn, New York. I'm from Crown Heights, Brooklyn. I may not have always loved having a police in my neighborhood, and that's just a thing from a kid. I may not have always loved it. Fuck the police. Take all the police out the neighborhood. But when I needed them, they were there. And a lot of our officers today, they're black, they're Hispanic, they're white. And the nosy ass, old ass people beat their ass. So removing qualified immunity only lowers the, the number of officers in communities. What we're seeing right now is a movement of policing from states where they're not really respecting law enforcement to states where they do, where there's not that moral support for law enforcement. I was in my district yesterday. I was talking with an officer who's from Philadelphia. He was a Philadelphia officer. He now is a Fort Myers officer. I asked him, I was like, well, why'd you make the move? He goes, because up there, there was no support for me as an officer for what I love to do, which is serve my community. So I said, enough is enough. I'm a move. He went to Florida. That's so sick. Yeah. It's, it's, again, a part of, like, you know, people think that police are just like these decrepit, like, like these are humans. Like, for example, I, I think after, uh, was it the Freddie Gray thing? Let me Google it. Freddie Gray. Yeah. yeah. So the Freddie Gray situation um, actually I actually only remember the full case, but I do know that the police apparently stopped responding to the bad neighborhoods. They're like, man, I ain't we ain't trying to deal with you niggas. They was just like, all right, we're not dealing with y'all niggas. So when y'all call us, we'll come in two hours. You get what I'm saying? And at that point, who needs the cops the most? Yo, there's a shootout over here. Come through. Uh, we'll catch y'all later. So, you know, 
again, it, you know, people think that, like, police are just, like, slaves. Like, yo, y'all need to go do th You have to make the cops feel somewhat protected as well if they're doing their job right. Now, bad cops, you get them out of here. Like, the nigga who shot the, the woman who, who, who... Nah, bro. All police come off like that. I don't give a fuck who it is, bro. My, my sheriff in Florida, he's like, I have more applications coming from officers who are in states or in localities where they're not getting the, the moral support or whatever they need to continue to do their job day in, day out. And so they're leaving. Well, who does that hurt? That hurts. That hurt. Who does that really hurt, though, Charlemagne? Yeah, because if you, don't have officers in the, you know, if you don't have officers on the streets or officers, you know, in urban areas, who's really left in that lurch? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what, what does qualified immunity have to do with having less police officers? Because, that... because the economic incentive of qualified immunity means that your personal assets aren't gone after if something goes wrong. So, it, you know, you're in business, you're in business. Do you get involved in a project or a deal that leaves you massively exposed financially? You may, depending on your passion for that project, but then you yeah, also sit back and think, now, wait a minute, if something goes wrong, I'm going to be held massively liable. But you're, but Maybe but, I need to do something. But, but, but you're like, goes wrong. We're talking about people getting yeah. hurt or killed. Yeah, clearly. And I when it's people clear, that you've yeah. rushed over. But it's clear, when, when somebody clearly over violates a constitutional right. And when, you're, when you violate a constitutional right, qualified immunity doesn't apply to you. And that's what I'm talking about. It True. does not. And Angela, don't do that. It does not. I thought, you, that the, I thought that was the definition. I thought <laughs> that was the definition. No, it does I thought not. that was the definition. Yeah, that's crazy how Charlemagne, who's on like Fox News, like, but like this. I don't even know that much about politics, bro. Charlemagne be on CNN and all these little political joints. Charlemagne should know this shit. Qualified immunity does not apply to cold blooded killings of anybody. Quite like, bro, like, we can just look up the fucking definition qualified immunity. Like, and that's what they kept saying immunity without saying qualified. It literally means, which, which by the way, for example, I, I'll give you a, a good example of qualified immunity. If you, if a cop knowingly or just flagrantly violates someone's fourth amendment, what's your fourth amendment? Your fourth amendment is, the, is your right um, against unlawful searches and seizures, right? which means with in certain cases they need a goddamn warrant right they need a warrant um to search your house right or you know like th th there's a few like you know uh, uh, almost amendments to it where like say your car they can't be like open your trunk yeah. they gotta at least go get a dog to get probable cause you get what i'm saying um or if they want to go in your house they need a fucking warrant say say a mm. cop Pulls up to your house, goes into your house, right? Think about this. Goes into your house unlawfully, unlawfully goes into your house, no warrant, starts to search your house for some shit. You walk around the corner because in your house you be having a gun on your waist. Where you going? And the cop sees you and the cop shoots you in your own house because you had a gun on your waist and he thought you felt you, you, you were a threat. Maybe he said, put it down and he just shot you. That cop loses qualified immunity. Why? Because he's already violating your <laughs> Fourth Amendment right. So that cop is going to jail. Qualified immunity because you're, you are, you can, your immunity goes out the window when you're inhibiting someone else's right. Right? So that's what, like, I, th I thought that was, like, common knowledge. This is, like, second grade education. Like, how people don't know that? Do you get what I'm saying? Does, does that example make sense to anybody? I don't even know if y'all care about politics, but that was like a good example. I ain't gonna lie. You need a warrant to go in somebody's house, right? T to go search someone's house. A cop goes in someone's house and is searching illegally, sees a nigga walk in his house with a gun on his waist, shoots the nigga, kills the nigga, right? Now, granted, in another situation where he was pursuing a suspect, right? And that suspect's wanted for murder, and he then runs into the house, which is which actually is it's actually a technicality. Like they could they could run into your house if they're pursuing a, a a witness. They could run into your house. They just they can't go into your house for the purposes of searching, which that's your Fourth Amendment right. So it, I, I I think everybody understands that shit. You get what I'm saying? Um. Sheeny Beanie. Oh, thank you for that, by the way. I don't know if you're a woman or a man. Sounds like a woman, but I'll, I'll just say person. He said, no, I want the feds to step in if a crooked-ass cop 
Um, and local government isn't holding a cop accountable and are hiding behind qualified immunity. Well, well, here's the thing. If you're living in a if you're living in a county, right? Because the county deals with all municipal things, right? Most if murders are are prosecuted on a county level, right? Um, felonies are, are are prosecuted on a county level. Ordinances are prosecuted on a municipal level, right? For the most part. If your county doesn't think it's necessary to charge that cop, if your state doesn't think it's it's sufficient to charge that cop, you need to move out of that, that fucking place. I'm going to be honest with you. If you're relying on the federal government, like the, the, there's many rules that the federal government don't enforce because they trust the state. I hear y'all with, with saying, oh, no, we want them to, to jump into this situation. Well, there's many rules that the federal government don't enforce. There's many, like, the federal government, it's illegal to have marijuana. In your state, like my state, it's legal. The feds could come in, have agents, and if somebody's in my car with marijuana, they could lock me up or lock them up. And be like, hey, we're prosecuting it federally. You know what they do? They say, hands off. We're going to let the state handle that. Unless you're doing some wild shit where you're doing some interstate commerce and you're doing a large amount. Same with even, um, um, for the most part, even like sex trafficking to certain extent. Well, sex trafficking usually is like state by state. But even with um, 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 federally, you can't give consent if you're under the age of 18. Federally. Some states... Say 16. The, 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 the feds usually, unless it's some shit they really give a fuck about, if they know the states have a varying degree because they know a lot of states southern um, are more conservative, a lot to the east and to the west are more um, uh, uh, um, progressive, they let the states handle a lot of things as per how those states view those issues. So... I mean, what do you want it? Do you, like, again, if you're saying you want the, the, the federal government to jump in that case, why don't you want the federal government to jump in every case? Because if you want the federal government to jump in every case, all right, marijuana is banned. By the way, even with the abortion thing, like the, the whole the the, the, the the whole thing with um, um abortion is like the feds are just saying let the states handle it. Now, granted, you might be in a state like Georgia. What is it, Georgia? I think – one of them states down south was like, nah, you can't do abortion here, so you got to drive over to another state. I get that, too. But they're not banning this shit. They're just saying we don't, like, yo, whatever state you're in. Like, I mean, it, it, and there's pros and cons to it. Like, for example, I'll give you another example. that th th This might be a con. So I'm not for the feds not, not, not um, stepping in anything because it's just pros and cons. Think about this. I'm a I'm a huge two A supporter, right? Like two A, uh, um, um, that's the right to bear arms. Y'all know I got fifty guns. I live in New Jersey. I have a concealed carry permit, right? It took me hell and high water to get that. You feel what I'm saying? I have like all my permits have to be signed by the chief of police in my city. Every permit to have a gun, I could only buy one handgun. Every month, I buy a handgun. If I if I move down to Tennessee, if I move down to Georgia, I could buy 600 guns one day. I could only buy one handgun a month in New Jersey. Federally, because constitutionally, your second amendment rights is protected. If we go by the federal rules, Jersey couldn't play all this bullshit. Jersey's governor and attorney general, they play weird bullshit games just like New York. You know why? This ain't Texas. If they allow everybody to have guns in New York and New Jersey, where there are literally, there's more people here than half of the country. <laughs> like the Northeast has more people than half of this fucking country. If they allow everybody to run around with a gun, there's going to be mass crime. <laughs> so what they do is they make it really hard to have a gun or they, outla they outlaw a lot, um, like for example, you could only have ten in a clip here. You you go to uh, Florida, you could have a fifty round drum. You get what I'm saying? 
if you have 50 bullets in New York City and, and, and it's so populated, imagine a nigga walking around with a, in Texas, it's open carry. Imagine walking around Times Square with a gun just sitting on your hip. So what I'm saying is that when y'all when I say I want, um, y'all want the feds to regulate everything. Well, if the feds regulate everything, it won't match where you're at, because technically everybody's it, uh, you know obviously not felons and obviously not mentally ill and this and third. And, come on, background check. I'm for all that. But technically, everybody could, should get a gun if you're legal. And, and you're like law-abiding and not crazy and whatever, whatever. Would you want 12, mil, 12 million guns in New York City? Everybody walking around with a gun on their hip? Yeah, all right, nigga. That shit would be a bloodbath. Come on, man. Like, look, look, yo, I have a concealed carry for Pennsylvania, too. It explicitly says, do not bring your gun into Philadelphia. Why? Philly's... Pennsylvania is a big ass, big ass country ass state. It's mad spread out. Niggas got like thirty uh, acres. This and there, people got shooting ranges on their their, 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 their um their, their homes or their, their property. That's how like spaced out and country it is. When you get to Philadelphia, it's the caged in city that is like New York City. So if everybody could have a gun out there, nigga, Man, it's already the home of the switches to be a bloodbath. So again. Going back to what I'm saying, I put that nigga when, when I say y'all want the feds to step in, it seems like y'all want the feds to step in because y'all okay. think that's a problem. Um, okay. I'm not opposed to the feds saying, you know, by the way, on certain in certain situations, Everything if the state's okay. wilding out, like, I don't know how they would get to that point, but whatever, they're wilding out. Well, I want to yeah, hit that pink yum yum, yum bad, bro. Generally, I'm, I'm going to hit the pink yum yum at the end of the stream and watch, watch what it do. I'm wild awoke. Watch what that shit do. I don't know what's in that hole. Yeah, let the states rock out where they want to rock out, man. I think people need to, you know, me, like, shit, I'm, I'm, I'm finna be done with New Jersey, man. I'm going to Florida, man. I'm a Florida type nigga, man. Florida, Texas, that's my type of states. Florida, Texas, too much body money in the Georgia, so I'm good. Uh, but, like, Florida, Texas. Hey, Texas, where's it at? I told you. That's where we moving, man. I'm going back home for, like, a year. Maybe not even that long, but I know I'm moving back home next November. Going to be there for a little bit. And then I'm um, only reason why I'm doing that uh, for like a year to uh, to go back and forth from there to Texas. Find a good spot in Texas. Then we moving to Texas, man, for good. Like, that's the last, Texas, the last stop. I don't know what part of Texas. That's why I need some time to uh, figure it out, but. Texas, the last stop, man. Just like, that's where I'm at with it. I got to get the fuck up out of California. ASAP. Florida, Texas. I've been hearing good things about Arizona. Like, those are my type of places down there. You know what I mean? I watched, I, I, I did watch an interview with um the baby today. I said, maybe North Carolina, some shit like that. Man, New York, New Jersey, garbage. I ain't going to lie, bro. No, no, it's not, if, you, if you carry yourself outside of the confines of your training and the protocols of that department, qualified immunity doesn't apply to you. It That's does not, not true. It, that is very true. That is very that true. Is that false. is patently That is patently true. And we need to make sure we have that accurate. We cannot make that statement because you have a lot of officers out here who do their job with honor and dignity and respect for the people that they serve. I, I need to hear what, what, what Mrs. Um, what, what's her name? I need to hear what she, she, she says. That's not true. How is it not true? Well, says, okay, listen, qualified immunity is a legal doctrine that protects government, government officials from civil lawsuits when they perform their jobs unless they clearly violate a constitutional right. That's exactly what I'm saying. And what is a violation of that right is when they're outside the norms of their training and the protocols of that department or that agency. Of that agency. But here's here's the main thing, because we can actually go past qualified immunity because this is the place where you've refused to answer both on Donald Trump's accountability and on the law enforcement that you love so dearly. Right. What we know is that he's seeking full immunity, like the same immunity he, he now has because of the Supreme Court, because of this corruption of the Supreme Court, we have now gone beyond civil presidential immunity to criminal presidential immunity. He would like to give that same immunity to law enforcement. True or false? Well, let's let's expand that a couple. True things. or false? You can't ask true, a true or false, Angela, because, because you gotta explain simple. the details. No, see, this is the problem. I don't want you to explain the details because when you explain. Why? You don't want people to hear the details, road, Angela. The details are what are things that matter. You got to explain the like details, or then you just talk. You just talking.
and then explain. If you, you don't, do that? if you don't explain the details, then you're just talking. Yeah, you don't want to say that because you know that it's not true. So that is not true. On. You want a true or false statement? Congressman, I want to know. I'm, if I don't want to argue with you. I want to explain the facts. Country. Angela, I don't want to argue with you. I would I like to know if you've ever experienced racism in this country, Congressman. Yeah, actually, I have. Okay. Do you believe America? She does jump from point to point. A racist country? No, I don't. Okay, I believe that you, that's true because you said that in an op-ed on Fox News as a black conservative, I, like Senator Scott, agree in our two lives and the lives of many black men and women like us are living proof that America is indeed no longer a racist nation and by far the best place to reach your fullest potential. And so here's my question. You did, however, vote to support the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act along so. with every member of the House except for three Republicans. So I appreciate your bipartisan, bipartisanship yeah. there. And I, what I do know as well, because America is in fact a racist country, was founded on such principles. Black men were lynched by the carceral state last week. I'm sure you've heard of Marcellus Williams by now in Missouri, who was convicted by a nearly all white jury. And Freddie Owens in South Carolina, who was executed despite his friend recanting testimony that Owens was not in fact there. Um, this is the same state, by the way, that allowed for a firing squad as an execution option. Black people. Um, are about seven and a half times more likely to be wrongfully convicted of murder in the United States than our white Jesus folks, and about 80% more likely to be innocent than others convicted of murder, according to a 2022 report by the National Registry of Exonerations. So please tell me how America is not a racist country. Uh, first thing I would say is that our past is a dark one. It really is. We can't, we can't walk away from that. Uh, we had whole laws that were subjugating black people in the south of this, of this nation for decades after the Civil War. We can't walk away from that one. It has really slowed down people from being able to excel. By Kamala? Yes. The vice president. <laughs> oh, oh, Charlemagne. But still the president. Charlemagne, listen, man. When Joe Biden wanted to do his American rescue plan, Kamala Harris was the tie-breaking vote in the United States Senate. She broke the tide and started this inflation that has hurt so many people in our country. Everybody listening to your show. That who's... Is it's not true. First of all, it's you, it's you sure you want to go there? You sure you want to go there? Outside, you sure you want to go, you go there? Okay, let's go there. <laughs> you got no. He said, "What you pulling out? <laughs> you got that tech? <laughs> Nigga pulling out that tech, that Ruger. He got that goddamn. What I? You got no, Angela, right? <laughs> Yo, my boy came with it. <laughs> Yo, Angela, right, man? I ain't gonna lie, man. This is bad, shorty. This inflation, which, by the way, was brought to us by Kamala Harris, it has really slowed down people from being able to excel. By Kamala? Yes. The vice president. <laughs> oh, oh, Charlemagne. It's but, still the president. Charlemagne, listen, man. When Joe Biden wanted to do his American rescue plan, Kamala Harris was the tie-breaking vote in the United States Senate. She broke the tide and started this inflation that has hurt so many people in our country. Everybody listening to your show. That who's? Is... It's not true? First sure? of all, it's the tie-breaking vote. You sure you want to go there? Go outside. You go outside. You sure you want to go there? Okay, let's go there. You got notes. You got notes, Angela, right? That's fine. I have no. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it to Charlemagne. I'm gonna give it to Charlemagne. Is that on every question I've asked? Because oh, because, yeah, because Angela, Angela, for hold every, on now. Tr go for ahead. every infrastructure project in your community, you, can go, to you third should go out just and thank portion. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and the Congress that voted for the American Rescue Plan. Angela, that's what you, that's what should be happening. Larry Summers wrote an op-ed back in 2021. Larry Som Larry Summers was the Treasury Secretary for Bill Clinton. He was an economic advisor to Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. He said that the American Rescue Plan that Joe Biden wanted, that Kamala Harris was a tie-breaking vote in the United States Senate, would create a massive inflation that we have not seen in a generation. Well, guess what? Larry Summers was correct. You know who also was correct, Angela? I was, because I was in the budget committee when they brought the bill. And I said in that committee, it's gonna cause massive inflation. That's what happened. So the problem we have in our economy today is that prices have gone up massively. Wages adjusted for inflation is down. People's pocketbooks are hurting, but we have a presidential election of 40 days. So. And I'm gonna ask Envy this question. Envy, you do, you do how you do, you, you're in the housing business as well. I know because I watch. Out how I listen to the show. No, I'm just asking them a question. Chill, Angela. So I, you know, I, and I listen to the show. I know you do a lot of business in housing. Mm -hmm. Would you hire somebody that broke up stuff in one of your houses to fix the other houses? No. Exactly. She broke the economy. I'm that's not, not going to do this me. this morning, Byron. Why, why so now you tell me to chill. Because I'm bringing facts. Hold on now. So now I'm bringing facts, and you don't want to do it no more. Come on now, Angela. That's not right. I'm bringing. Charlamagne, man, y'all gotta get somebody better to be be getting at these homies, man. Shorty came on here, and I ain't even gonna say the stereotypes, but she proved every single one right, man. Arguing in bad faith. When confronted with the response that she did not like, she changed the subject rather than acknowledge. Argued feelings over facts. Saying it, gang. Oh, yeah, fact so back, I thought so we were going to have a fact-based conversation. I want to have a fact-based conversation. You wanted to bring up votes, and so let's talk about votes. Go ahead. You have a 96% voting record with Heritage Action. Angela, and for I'm those not running for president, but we can talk about votes. For those who are listening, yeah. um, Heritage Action is a part of the Heritage Foundation, which is the, arch the architect of Project 2025, which we can talk about more later. 
Okay. You voted no on H.R. 8404, which would provide federal recognition and protection to interracial couples. Um, and that, that actually is a law that would benefit you, Congressman, given your mar your marriage. You voted no H.R. 6878 on requiring. The like, I'm for everybody, man, including the people I look like. Not for everybody. I'm for the people like, that you look like. But right? I'm for them, too. I'm 100 percent. 100 percent. I was saying this thing not black enough, bro. People that privacy. See, listen, listen. I came up from nothing. I'm to be blunt with you. Yo, you know what's crazy? It's always like a light skin. It's always like a white man, a extra light skin mixed woman, that's always super pro black, and the nigga who got to spray that motherfucking what that shit called that make your beard darker. The nigga who black as fuck like this nigga is accused of his blackness, but the woman who is. Who could be, who, well, I don't know if Angela Wright could pass, but she light as a, light as a motherfucker. She gets, she gets the super black uh, um, badge while this black motherfucker over here got over, got to be, um, got to justify his blackness. But you, I'm not even supposed to be here. We talked a little bit about my past and things that I've done wrong, et cetera. Uh, anyway. Um, haven't touched it. Or are you now distancing yourself from those people? I'm happy to name names, including Stephen Miller, who I know you're very familiar with, was a very through Washington, you have the Center for American Progress. Oh, so they go to think tanks. They write up white papers all the time. That does not mean that what they write up actually becomes law. Well, no, it's not. Because what's going to happen is it's going to increase the cost of housing $25,000. Because if you know every first-time home buyer has $25,000, me, we agree with that work that Heritage did. But here's my question. What does Kamala Harris actually want to do? Because let's talk about her economic plans that she's coming. I'm going to go through a couple of them. She says she wants to tax unrealized gains. I don't know if she really wants to do that anymore because Mark Cuban, who's supporting her, went on CNBC and said that it would destroy okay, the stock market. Answer project 2025. But hold on, we talking, I, I was we looking at, about, I'm checking I already, to see I already where Kamala answered, Harris already is. already answered. Because, because we have a presidential election in 38 days now, which is the thing that's coming forward. So we need to have this conversation. The, the, Damn, um, she wants Sunderland. to do price gouging or go after price gouging. Well, how are you going to do that? Because when you do that, what you're actually going to do is put downward pressure on prices in our country. When you do that artificially, what you create is scarcity of product. So what is, what that, what is that? What that means is you're going to have poor people in our country who are going to have less access to goods and services because rich people don't get the goods and services no matter what. They have like the access. That, they're going like, to get them. So you're going to have less product for poor people in our country. She had a thing about she wants to do uh, $25,000 for a new home, for new first-time home buyers. I think that's great. Well, no, it's not because what's going to happen is it's going to increase the cost of housing $25,000 because if you know every first-time home buyer has $25,000 from the government in their back pocket, you as a seller, you're going to be like, oh, wait a minute. Every seller writ large is going to be like, you know what? Well, then I can increase my price to $25,000. It's going to have an upward trajectory shot on housing costs in our country, which is the thing we don't need in America. Th those are three economic policies that's I that's know are like, not going like, to work. Well, I mean, that's not like a hypothetical. Yeah, yeah, why would it increase that? If yeah, somebody yeah, somebody yeah, like, like $25,000 from the government to purchase their phone. Let's, so say, that, let's, say, there, the let's say there's 3 million first-time home buyers in the United States of America. They all have an additional $25,000 of purchasing power. You do have a situation where every seller in the country is going to realize, oh, shoot, is this a first-time home buyer? Well, I know you have an additional twenty five. dollars like Angela Rye, I ain't gonna lie, man. The Breakfast Club done propped you up. I the thought you was a club, genius until I seen another nigga who really knew his shit step in the building. Angela Rye, I'm gonna keep it a bean with you. You are smart when you talking to us dumb niggas that don't really pay attention to politics. But anytime you get, I've, well, I mean, uh, you usually do I don't see it because I've seen you on there a couple times. But this nigga just ate your food. I ain't gonna hold you, man. And, 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 Maybe I'm a little biased because I, I feel like I'm kind of more, um, I kind of fuck with the, the, the policies that he talking about. But I do feel like she didn't debate or argue any points. She just trying to bring up gotcha things. And as soon as he started explaining, she moved on to the next point, which is usually someone who is debating or asking questions in bad faith. They don't want to concede that you're right. They don't want to have an argument because they don't have a point. They want to ask you something that to try to get to try to stump you, and and that's what she came across as yes. to try to, to 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 move people emotionally in a negative response to what Georgia was doing. What we have seen in the outcome is that Georgia has actually had inclusion of people of color and of black people. In that what state. the new Georgia laws make voter intimidation uh, easier? How? So how? Yeah, I think I think the most important thing here, Byron, that I think we're overwhelming here. You say is as a black man in Florida. Your argument is that it's easier to vote today than it was in 2013 when the Supreme Court eviscerated the Voting Rights Act of 1965, which, again, I've heard you tout. Your argument is that states don't need preclearance, that counties don't need preclearance, no, that there's been no discriminatory impact since Shelby Counter versus Holder, and that's why they should get rid of it. You brought up Jim Crow, and I'm glad you did. 
um, because you also have had something to say about Jim Crow. And I know that <laughs> this, for whatever reason, has been yeah. unnecessarily tensed. But I would love to invite you to clarify your remarks around Jim Crow so that, that yeah. can, you can at least get rid of that part of misinformation. It's clear that you do stand opposed to the Voting Rights Act, though, in 2024. No, we were talking, we were in Philadelphia. We were talking about just uh, the rise of black families again, and which is actually a great thing in our country. And really uh, comparing that to what was happening under that time period, the Jim Crow era, where, yeah, marriage rates in the black family were very high. After that era, with Lyndon Johnson's Great Society, in part, that is the reason for the decrease in the marriage rate in black families. And if you're going to have a strong, in order to have strong black families, obviously you need a father in the home. You're starting to see that again in America. That's a great thing. Because when fathers are at home helping to raise their kids and nurture their kids, it puts their kids in a better position to be able to be successful going forward. Like, my dad wasn't there when I grew up. 